All right, Robbie, who do we have with us today? Another Robbie. Two Robbies. I, I feel honored to be in the same virtual room. I have to say that this Robbie at least was smart enough to add an I to his name. Yeah. <laughs> so kudos to you. I mean, I never call him, I never proclaimed that was smart, so that's on, that's I do, on me. It, how many times do people ask you how to pronounce your name? Uh, I think they just, I don't know if they'd ask me a lot or just assume, which I don't know. I'm guessing, Robbie, you have no problem with your name. Everybody goes straight for it with it being spelled correctly. Yeah, at least my first name, but I get the question a lot. Is it Robbie or is it Robert? And it's just Robbie. And then the last name, Patterson, I definitely get a lot of of double T's in there. So I like to just say it's one T, FYI. Thomas uh, Thomas asked it five minutes ago. Yeah, I did. (laughs) You're correct. Yep. All right. So... We're pretty excited to have you on. This is Robbie Patterson, who is, what is your official title at Adidas? Adidas, if you want to say it right. Yeah, so I am the Senior Manager of Footwear Product Development for Adi Zero, specifically Elite Racing, which essentially is taking care of a full range of high-performance products from road running all the way down to track and field, and obviously getting to represent here um, myself, but there are a huge number of amazing team members behind Adi Zero and behind what we're about to all talk into. So I get the joy to represent them, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, we take care of pretty much every high performance product we do in Adi Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Adi Zero is probably my favorite segment of Adidas shoes. Um, Robbie, you probably pretty excited right now because you're watching a lot of athletes go off and uh, are running worlds right now in your product. Yeah, it's it's honestly a pretty special experience popping on the Addy running Instagram, for example. That's where you always get the kind of the best shots of these incredible athletes. And the first post is always that one with the the spikes or the shoes, and it's tied around their neck, and it's the latest article that came out. And you know, it's always an interesting one because what you're seeing there is essentially what we worked on some years ago, and um, which is funny that you look at it and you remember, ah, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Because we're kind of in the future a little bit, working on the things that are coming out in the next year. So it's, it's, it's a super special experience. And it's also a very privileged way to say, like, it's been happening quite a lot recently as well, right? In the last, in the last couple of years, like, things have been, there's been a very big shift um, in the game, at least for Addy. And we really, we really came back and we came back very hard um, since the last, the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen you're talking about the last couple of years and the shift, the audio is pro three in particular, since we do a lot more marathon, um, kind of coverage or participation here at believe in the run, the audio is three has been our audio is pro three has been on so many podiums over the last couple of years. We both wore it for the Boston marathon back in April and really found it to be just a great shoe. Um, I didn't even take it off after the marathon. I wore it around. (laughs) It felt good enough that, uh, I didn't shower or change and went out for the evening straight from a <laughs> marathon was uh, probably in it until 8 p.m. at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that seems to be like you're a little the, bit taller as well, right? Highlight. Which is kind of nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. It, it, I definitely got on all the roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that seems to have been kind of the cherry on top of the whole Audi Zero line. Um, but maybe go back and tell us how, you know, since we've seen the last couple of years, this resurgence of Adidas and their shoes in your shoes on podiums and just winning races, where, where did that kind of come from? Where did that start that this new phase? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And it's a bit of a, an epic story, which goes back quite some years. Um, I've been, I've been in the team since 2017 and, Essentially, around 2019, there was some things going on in the running world where we as a team and as a brand had to come together and have a little look at what was going on um, inside the brand, outside the brand, at what some com- competitors were doing. Or maybe not so much competitors, but competitor that was kind of dominating this new paradigm of podium places, right? Back then, every podium position, mm-hmm. it was constantly this, this 4% shoe and everyone was freaking out like, what, what's going on here? Now, our team got together and really had to have a think about some restructuring, some changes of priority, some 
innovation that was needed and needed kind of intensely like yesterday, you know? So yeah, it really is kind of a long story and it depends how many details we want to get into, but we essentially had our eyes set on one goal, which was to build the best marathon racing shoe and the Adios Pro project from there was born. And back then, you know, it really was this really tight timeline we were working against, trying to get it launched. I think it was for Berlin, or it was for one of the main races in April of 2020. And the team put in this incredible shift to, to make this miraculous, epic product in such a short amount of time for this race it was going to come in with a boom. And then literally that was like when COVID properly hit all the races were canceled for months and months and months. Um, so that was a bit of an interesting experience, but essentially, yeah, it was September when things slowly start opening up again, Prague, we had the half marathon that was allowed, the race was on, but there was all of these rules. Everyone had to come in masks and social distancing, but we did have some of our epic athletes coming Perez, Chip, cheer, cheer, for example. And then this was kind of when I would say the swell, was just coming and rising and rising. And then that first wave started to peel. And that was Perez breaking the women's half marathon back then in September, 2020, I believe it was. And essentially we took this project, this team, this set of ingredients in this way of thinking. And we decided to structure our entire range based on this way of working and this way of innovating with exploring new materials, new constructions, new innovations. And the really fun and exciting part was we kind of, we started at point A and we started to look at like what works well for a marathon for 42K for that speed. And then it really was the question, how can you start to learn from that speed and that distance and integrate the technologies and the learnings into the other disciplines? So going up even a little bit, what does a shoe look like for even slightly longer runs? What does a shoe look like with that technology for a half marathon, for a 10K on the road, on the a 5K on the road, track 10K, 5K. And as you slowly now look at the entire Adi Zero range since that revolution in fall 21, you can paint this red thread of technology, of design, of innovation that really is bringing it all together. And I think that's a super epic thing because it started with just a podium position for road racing, which then turned into podium positions for loads of different events. And obviously that whole thing kind of kickstarted the can I, can I? Zero Road to Records events the last few years, which has obviously been, yeah, sorry, go for it. <laughs> Just on a bit of a monologue. No, I want to take you, I want to take you back a little bit because we skipped over, I say would be the Rocky Patch. And before you guys got into uh, <laughs> what I think now is the modern Audi Zero line, it seemed it seemed like there was a mm -hmm. lot of um, once the panic across the board in different um, running companies once the four percent shoe came out that there there was everybody was trying to get the foams right trying to get the stack height right trying to get the plates in there and and really try to kind of mimic it and I felt like at the time uh, Adidas wasn't necessarily trying to mimic the 4% shoe, it was still staying with a race flat, lower stack, um, more traditional style racing flat. And I'm curious, what was the holdup before yeah. the innovation? Was it the right foams? Was it figuring out the plate? Cause you guys went with a very interesting um, plate. Com 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 I wouldn't even say it's a plate, it's a competition to the plate, still using carbon, but in a different way. Like, what was the thought process before right. you guys ended up diving into the modern shoe? I mean, I think looking back, and that was mid-2000s, I don't want to get it wrong also, because it's when I, I wasn't even in the team back then, but I know that, that the Addy Innovation team at some point were, were working on this sub-2 shoe, right? And their, their whole concept was, let's pick the parameter of mass and go as extreme as we can. Because we know from a running economy perspective, 100 grams reducing on the shoe is a 1% saving. So that was really the focus. At the time in the company, then you had to sub to the super traditional racing flat. 
I guess in parallel, there were other companies, a company looking at a totally different way of building a shoe with totally different new understandings and knowledge and testing insights. Um, looking at new foams, stack heights, bringing back carbon carbon elements because carbon elements have been in racing shoes for decades. You know, it's more just like how do you yeah. bring them in in a modern way? But essentially, that wasn't our priority back then as a brand, and that's just like a, a personal opinion. You know, you got to then zoom back to all them years. Who was CEO at that point? Who was head of innovation at that point? It's it's just a totally different chapter. But from my perspective, it seemed like our priority wasn't about um, landing world records in Adi Zero. Like it wasn't as much of a focus then. And I think what happened in them years really shook up the the essence of Adidas again, because, you know, the best sports brand in the world, I think it was a bit of a, an awakening to be like, let's get back on this. Let's, let's compete. Let's get on the podium. Um, and then, I, like I said, because of what was happening in the industry, that was essentially what got us sitting down together as a bigger crew and understanding how are we going to get after this, which then leads into the first Adios Pro work stream, um, which I'd be happy to talk a little bit more of the details, for example, how we came up with the bending stiffness solution, the energy rods back then. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Um, this is a, this is a, a project which sits like very dear to heart for myself and the amazing colleagues that I'm surrounded by because it was like a mission, you know, we all had our eyes set on one thing and the way we worked together was truly like relentless and it was a very special experience to get to go through that. But we were on a testing insights and development trip in Kenya in 2019. Yeah, 2019. E10, home of the champions. So we revisit Kibi Bot Candy, Ronex Caputo, Perez, Jir Jir, all of these world-class, fastest humans in the world out there doing a trip. And looking at some prototypes that we'd been ideating around, we just wanted to bring it back. Like what makes a marathon shoe fast from a perception point of view, from a sports science point of view, from a biomechanics point of view. It's this like triangle. Okay, you have your mass, of a shoe, your bending stiffness of a shoe, and your cushioning system. This is like the, the triangle, the pyramid. And we were ideating around how to optimize and improve new technologies on all three of these elements. Obviously at the time, Nike had just came out with this carbon plate, which of course a lot of brands then went on to, in my opinion, just copy, like copied it straight up. I think we wanted to take a bit of a different approach and say, okay, we know that bending stiffness improves performance working with these foams that are a certain rebound, that are a certain stack height. How could we innovate and bring a solution to the table that is better than a plate and is different from what everyone else is doing? And that's where we had the inspiration to be looking a bit at how fast and incredible these athletes were running and also looking at the natural way their foot were moving as they were running. And a lot of sketches were being drawn on paper in this amazing little hut in Kenya. And when we got back to HQ, we kind of put these concepts on a board. We went through some kind of like, yeah, development, understanding to see which ones would come forward and looking at the metatarsal bones of the foot, inspired a little bit by nature, we thought, how could we integrate the bending stiffness following this kind of um, performance attributes? And from there, it became this big study to understand how does bending stiffness work at such high speeds in combination with soft foams. And we just started iterating. We 2D files were made, then 3D files were made. Then we were opening molds in Asia. We were making samples. They were coming only a few weeks later. We were downstairs in the biomechanics lab, state of the art, world-class research that was going on hard and fast on the course of around four weeks it was crazy how fast this all happened. And we realized we had something very special on our hands. And that was the moment we, yeah, the energy rods were, were born. But funnily enough, back then, we were building everything on a 50 mil stack height shoe because mm. the World Athletics regulations hadn't hit yet, right? 
So we were on this work stream, on this vibe, it's going so cool. And then all of a sudden it comes in this email from sports marketing, yo, we need to have a meeting, <laughs> something's happened. Get everyone in the room together and this world athletics rules comes out and we have just invested, you know, the energy, the time, the money, this amazing new system. We think it's gonna change, change, change running, change the game. And uh, the whole thing was like, none of it's gonna work. It doesn't fit. We need to change everything. Like, ah. yeah. Oh, it was, it was such a wild ride back then, really. Yeah. But, you know, we, we took a step back and then we did the same thing and we just went after it and we made it happen. And, and that's about it. Awesome. So quick question for you. You're testing on like apex athletes. You're testing on, you know, these uh, like almost unrelatable athletes to the average runner. And when you're creating shoes in the line for the top and the pinnacle of the sport, and then uh, it trickles down to their mediocre runners like ourselves <laughs> that want, want to experience the best that the sport has to offer. Do you find that, do you t first off, do you test on mediocre athletes as well to see how, how it translates between the pros and the, the mediocre people? And two, or is it pretty much just, hey, if it works for the pros, you'll get some benefit as a, uh, a mid-pack runner? Yeah, great question. By um, mediocre runner, what, what do you have in mind here? For example, a comfortable pace say, and a half, is, so, just, out of curios, just out of curiosity. Uh, I, I would, I, in a half, I'd say like 7.30 to, to eight minute. Per, per K. Right. Yeah, from sevens to eights. Seven, or for yeah. case, um, I don't even know the uh, kilometer uh, translation. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about someone that would do a half marathon in um, anywhere from uh, the 120 to 140 mm. range. Okay, yeah, got you, got you. Yeah, I mean, in the end, the way our testing system is set up at Adidas, we, we really have an amazing testing team. And it's been a lot of the same crew working on Adi Zero over these years and they've done an insanely good job. But we essentially, for Adi Zero specifically, we have a, it's not just a, quote unquote, any normal testers, we have an Adi Zero pool. So it's a set of testers that we use specifically for the Adi Zero projects. Now, it's also unique in Adi Zero because we do pro athlete testing and what you would call like inline testing, normal testing. And that is for the runners from speeds that definitely vary either side of what you just mentioned. And that's a really key part of the process. Like you would not, I don't think we'd be able to just completely close our eyes and move on with only pro athlete insights. I think most importantly, for sure, the pro athlete, pro athlete insights comes first. We then need to understand how does it translate to quote unquote the normal runners out there that are not you know the fastest people on earth, but that can range from a bunch of different paces, and you need to in the end commercialize a product, right? So, it's striking the balance between the best products to win races and break world records, and to get people like you two super stoked to buy Adi Zero to race in Adi Zero to support Adi Zero to also beat your personal best, break your own records, you know? What I'm trying to get to with the question about understanding the testing with the pros and building an elite product, do you find that when you bring that elite product down to the average runner, they're still getting benefits from it as much as the pros or is it relative to your performance level? Yeah, I think in the end, it's a, it's a strange mix of both, right? It's 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 going to come down to your own personal everyone's so unique in their you know the the way they run and how they run in their fitness levels and their max vo2 and their gait cycle so it's like a complex one you know if you were to just take the some of the fastest people in the world and build a shoe just for them it would be down to you know their their weight their um, their limb length like there's so many of these factors so we are obviously it depends on the project, but it's not it's not doing that. It's building a project that we know works 
for our pinnacle athletes, but it's also been validated and tested that it works just as well for our um, normal testers. And we do that from a perception point of view, so live performance feedback, but we also do it from a mechanical point of view, like in the laboratory, looking at the shoe, and from a biomechanics point of view. So looking at the how the shoe is impacting their biomechanics. And we do that test with both to make sure it's working for both sets of athletes. All right, Robbie, out of the uh, out of zero line, which is your favorite? Um, I think all together, I'd have to say the Takumi Sen 9 is probably my favorite Audi Zero mm. shoe. I, I love the kind of the versatility, but just the the feel. You still get the the snappy ground feel, the faster feel, but you also get that rebound and um, cushion from the that's right from the Lace Strike Pro. So I think overall that's probably my favorite shoe. Uh, what's yours, Thomas? I'm going to give it. This is a big comeback for me because the last two years I have not liked it at all. Was the Boston uh, 10 and 11 was not a shoe that I felt uh, comfortable running in. And now the Boston 12, you guys really knocked it out of the park. It's probably one of my favorite shoes this year, period, across the board. <laughs> I just I love what you guys did with the shoe. You gave it a little more softer feel under the forefoot. Um, I think just the combination there's maybe some tweaks I'd make to the upper, but overall, I just think it's a it's a fantastic shoe. And it even people complain about Adidas maybe being a little bit narrow. I feel like it has a very, um, and I have a narrow foot, so I don't need it, but I feel like the forefoot has plenty of room in there for people that just want to be able to feel the toes splay a little bit more and get out there. But it's a fun shoe. I think you guys really, I, I, I love that it's a, it's like a comeback shoe for me. Robbie, what's yours? Man, I'm not talking to Robbie mustache. Robbie, uh, Robbie no mustache. <laughs> the guest Robbie. Yeah. It almost seems like a cliche answer, but I would have to go for the, the Primex Too Strong. It's uh, like oh, wow. nothing like I've ever experienced before with a, not even just with a running shoe, but just with a product. You know, this thing is like a, a work of art and science and engineering, and it's just... It's just wonderful. <laughs> well, maybe we should get into breaking it, breaking it down and talking a little bit about uh, what's gone into the shoe. And it, I mean, it does look like the pinnacle of everything that you guys are working on. I love the strong technology on the upper, and I'm hoping that that's something that we'll see in um, maybe the pro as well. Uh, maybe across, maybe some other of the shoe. I'd love mm -hmm. to see it on the Boston. Um, like some of the other shoes getting the strong treatment would be great. Um, why don't, why don't you break down the Primex two strong and kind of give us an idea of what technologies you guys are using in there? You know, before diving into the, the details, it's worth to say that back then I told you about this scenario where we, we walked into this meeting room and were informed about the, the world athletics changes, but we had already created a 50 mil stack height shoe. We'd already analyzed the test results, both mechanical and perception. And from that point, we knew we had something unique, something special, something insane. And that's essentially, I think, when the, the Primex concept was born, right? Because we then changed everything to become the, the Arios Pro. But we were all sitting there, super motivated team. And we thought, OK, there's rules in place now. We have a box why don't we go outside the box and do something that no other brand has done and build a, a legal racing shoe? Illegal meaning it's more than 40 millimeters and it has more than one carbon element plate or plate. And from there, I'm sure you guys are obviously familiar with the, the Fall 21, the Primex Strung. We then came out with the, sorry, the Primex, just Primex, had the normal uh, mesh Adi Zero upper. And then we introduced the Primex Strung Still had the same bottom unit, of course, just with introducing the strong technology in the upper. We then really understood from the, the athletes, what did you like about that one? And how could we improve further? And then that's when Primex 2 Workstream began. And we decided to go for a full TN, a totally new design, with a brand new upper, a brand new bottom unit. And that is essentially what we now have with the Primex 2 Strong. So, the strung upper on the new model 
I personally also feel it has been significantly improved in the terms of the fit and the feel of the experience of running in the shoe. The way it's like a second skin that is malleable to your to your foot. And you say you like the Boston 12, then I'm excited for you to try this and see from an upper perspective what this feels like. Because we really looked into key expansion zones in the foot. We looked at our new yarn technology on where we could be implementing these slightly more advanced yarn setups and how we can build in a unique heel lock with our strong construction. And not only that, we basically took the strong upper and decided to integrate a knit um, tongue and tongue construction, essentially. And if you now look at the product, you can see that this new lacing system is essentially elevating any sort of lace pressure up and therefore it's wrapping and hugging your foot so, so well. And it just feels like a second skin. You almost barely even feel that there's an upper there, but at the same time, it really does. It feels like you're, you're locked in, you're, you're race ready, which is epic. And that's just from an upper perspective, right? Because I think the, the real magic on these products, it's not only just the upper, it's really about the engine. What do you have under there? What's under the hood, you know? And I think that's where we were super stoked because we didn't have rules and we had a basket of ingredients that were epic. And I'm talking a little bit more about the Light Strike Pro technology. We talk about this foam and how can we actually modify and tweak that foam in certain performance parameters to get the best out of the, the engine. And that's how we actually came up with like the, I'd say the, the equally top innovation in this new model. And it is the three layers of Light Strike Pro in the midsole. And the unique thing is we have these two full length layers, top and bottom in a sandwich. But in the forefoot, you have this Light Strike Pro third component. And it's actually engineered specifically for this stack height, and it's been engineered specifically for the carbon plate system inside. It is our highest rebound foam that has ever existed in our lab. And when we're measuring it, we were kind of seeing these off the chart results. And we decided, how can we integrate this foam, but also we know that it only works in combination with your other performance attribute, which is the bending stiffness. That's where the next big innovation of the, the midsole comes in. We have this full length double carbon plated system that works in yin and yang with the four foot foam coming together to create this truly unique running experience. It's almost like running on a trampoline that has jet rockets on it that's propelling you forward. And I'm not sure if you have had the chance to run in this yet, but yeah, it's truly sensational. It's extremely special. And just the sheer amount of cushioning you have, it's doing wonders for you on them longer runs when it comes to recovery and how you can basically train harder, faster, you can run faster for longer. And then a little bit in the outsole, it's really learning a little bit from the Pro series, our outsole there, and then implementing a bit of this Continental outsole grip. And I think from, yeah, the, the strung upper, the knit tongue, our double plate system, and our three layers of Light Strike Pro, that's essentially what's all coming together is the, the Primex too strong. Before, before we leave the outsole, one of the things that's kind of interesting about it is you have that Continental rubber that we're familiar with in the Pro 3. But on the, on the um, medial side towards the heel, you kind of have this smoother yep. uh, rubber that I wouldn't think has any kind of grip at all, pretty much. Is that just there to help you glide through your, through your uh, not create a braking effect? Like, what is that purpose? Yeah, in the end, like, if you're looking at the, the pressure distribution maps of our testers and of our runners, it's not so common that people are landing on this specific part, right? So we were really playing around with how can you go even lighter and even more extreme on your material placement. And this compound itself is actually less dense than the other rubber and playing a little bit on just trying to kind of balance out the weight of the project. We were taking decisions on where it makes sense to implement new materials. And also just from a, a perception and um, it's the word, you know, when you really, haptics, 
yeah, new new haptics as well, and how it basically works with this very clear, transparent grip that you have underneath the white piece or whatever color the piece is on your shoe. I think I have a different, no, no, different color red. on here. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice. real quick, you mentioned you mentioned weight here, and this shoe actually picked yeah. up weight over its predecessor. Is the trade off you feel that you get that the bounce and the pop off of the double plate and the light strike foam, is that the mitigating factor? Essentially, that's exactly it. Yeah, I think when we looked at the old Prime X, we understood what was going on in the, in the engine. But when we looked at what we wanted to improve in terms of cushioning and bending stiffness with our ingredients at that time, we knew that the other piece of the pie would have to take a little bit of a hit. So we wanted to invest that weight back into the bending stiffness and the cushioning system. Hence the reason the product got a little bit heavier. But through the athlete testing with such positive feedback and looking from a mechanical and biomechanical point of view, we came to the decision that it was the correct, the correct thing to do for this iteration. And so um, real quick, can you tell me again the plate system in here? It's two separate plates for the listeners. It's two separate plates, correct? And then is it a carbon fiber plate on top and TPU on the bottom or what's the composition of those plates? Yeah, great, great question. So the top full length plate is a carbon fiber plate and the plate on the bottom is essentially a carbon infused plate. And basically okay. the system is working together in the forefoot the plates are in some way connected, but between these two plates, that's where we have this new innovative compound of the Light Strike Pro, which we put in there, and essentially creating this extreme spring and propulsion system, which in the end, if you take any of them ingredients away, it just changes, changes the shoe completely, you know? It's all working in unison together. And it's been designed specifically for this foam and this double plated system. Now, I noticed in earlier prototypes well, that we've seen and I've seen in photos that people leaked out, it, there was not so much a third or second layer that extended the whole way to the toe, but there was more of a disc or just a puck of Light Strike Pro with bigger gaps in here. What's, mm -hmm. how or why has that changed in the final version? Essentially throughout the testing process, we were experimenting here with different compounds, with different materials, with different positioning plate setups. And then prototypes that leaked were essentially prototypes where they were obviously a little bit older and had certain test characteristics that once we done our prototypes with the foam that comes to the very toe, we realized it was actually performing superior compared to them prototypes. So again, keeping performance in mind, we wanted to keep pushing the needle forward and made the decision as a team to kind of remove that, um, yeah, how you called it, a puck. And it actually extends all the way to the toe, giving you even more of that kind of propulsion and rebound uh, in your toe off, which we know is like obviously super important for a racing shoe. Was, was the plate ever one piece where it was more like a taco um, kind of shell? It's a great, great question. You know, the prototyping, and the ideating for this project was one of the funnest because we did have a lot of um, ideas in the beginning and we, we iterated on many samples and there was a whole lot of interesting plate setups and layouts without getting into too many details but i like the way you're thinking <laughs> and would say that we definitely did experiment in this regard and you know it's like which direction does the taco go how hard is the taco <laughs> um how does it work with this foam and that foam and Essentially, that's the fun thing about product development, right? It's you test, you learn, you make changes and you keep going until until you nail it, at least within the confines of timeline and cost. Time. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you about the timeline, too, because you had mentioned at the top of the show that you're seeing people running spikes that you designed over a year ago. And obviously, you're probably designing now for Olympics and, you know, what's going to be on the feet of people um, a year from now. And everything you've learned in this, probably at this point, you're looking at this Prime X2 and going, yeah, that's, that was really great work we did. We're moving forward. 
Um, <laughs> and you can't tell me what you would improve at this point because this shoe is just coming out. But I'm guessing that you're still finding ways to make innovations at Adidas. Yeah, 100%. I think that's the interesting thing about this industry and this world and this sport, right? It's, it's almost like how do you enable athletes to evolve to be even faster and it's therefore it's kind of our responsibility and our job to be answering these sorts of questions so and that's how this whole thing works right it's not like you release this project and then a prime x3 doesn't come out for 10 years it's it's about learning from like i said what you had available to you at that time in terms of technology in terms of time and cost and then when we have a bit of breathing space to get together and say okay what went well, what didn't go so well, how could we make it even better? How could we improve performance another notch up? And that's essentially how the footwear industry works, right? It's because that's the interesting thing about technology and new concepts, new materials, new suppliers, like we're always all, all, we're always all trying to innovate. And then therefore it's really this collaboration of what's available and working with our innovation team and so many other teams to be honest are all working together to then bring them solutions so i think it's safe to say you obviously understand that the prime x2 strong is about to come out and we did sign this project off a long time ago of course there are some very exciting things in the pipeline especially because in this last little while i think we took another little leap in knowledge and understanding. And now we start to kind of bring that into the picture. And obviously that's not gonna be coming out anytime super soon, but at the same time on the horizon, it's looking bright again. There's another one of them, of them whale, waves coming in, you know? Um, speaking of that and a new wave coming up, I'm, we're in 2023 and I feel like shoes have gotten so good that it's almost hard to even have a bad running shoe. I feel some people, some people <laughs> are, that people have done. People I mean, it happens, it. but compared <laughs> to say that transition period when there were still like old EVA mixed with like newer foams and you could kind of say, this is shoe is so much better than this shoe. I feel like everything is, has kind of moved into like this yeah. period where the foams, the foams are so good. The performance is so good. If you get a good foam, you can put a slab of it under a decent upper. Exactly, and it, that's what and I mean. It feels good. Well, the, for instance, like Noble made a running shoe, and they just put Piba and an upper, and it, it wasn't terrible. Like it was fine. Like, it was a. It mm -hmm. felt yeah. good. I know another yeah. shoe coming out just like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but I'm wondering what's what's coming or not. I know you can't say anything, but how much better can shoes actually get? Yeah, it's a great, a great question. I think one that everyone's always thinking about, right? Especially because like you said, what your current solution is, it's just so good compared to five, 10 years ago. It's like, okay, surely it can't mm. get much better. And I think, I think it's fair to say, if you look at purely a running economy standpoint, let's take marathon running, for example, if you look at the performance of athletes in these shoes now versus 10, 20 years ago, it's, it's black and white. It's completely new game like a new paradigm altogether we're all aware of that mm -hmm. there's been a very big jump let's say in running economy if you really wanted to use the, per, the percentage um way of talking about it which is obviously quite relatable to consumers and to people there's been a very big jump right from around four to six percent i would say now the question is when and how would you have another jump that big again and when you start to look at what's possible your ideas can go in all sorts of different directions and it's just going to be really interesting to see what happens with the sport especially when you're confined to regulations and rules i think like, there will yeah. be this side of the game and the, there will be the side of the game where people are just making shoes on the more outside the box point of view and that's where i still believe and i'm seeing it and you will see it as well that the performance of running shoes is definitely still improving. And okay, it might not be from one season to the next another 4%, but slowly but surely that that number is on the rise. And I mean, I, yeah. I, I would think that like, if I was looking at it from a pure 
like what what I've seen in the pendulum swing. We went from very flat, minimal shoes because light was fast. So they mm -hmm. tried to put mm -hmm. the least amount of cushioning and the least amount of rubber on a shoe to get you to the finish line. We saw shoes like the Nike Mayfly, um, stuff like that come out. And then we found lighter foams that you could stack up to 40 millimeters and still have a seven and a half ounce shoe for uh, some, you know, somebody in a size 10 um, with, with a plate and you know, the upper shrink. So my, my guess is the innovation will come when we can get the kind of cushioning that we get in 40 millimeters in a thinner, lighter foam that still has the rebound and cushioning that you would get from 40 millimeter stack, 40 millimeter stack. So I, I think it, all the innovation is going to be coming from, um, the, the foams. And then the next thing is the fit. If the shoe can fit correctly and have light materials, the lighter, faster shoe that feels more natural underfoot and can propel you forward faster. I think that's, that's what the Holy grail would be, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think there's different ways of looking at it and different opinions. I think from from what you just said there, if you think of a 20 or 25 millimeter stack shoe that's providing you that same level of cushioning, you really need to understand like what can you actually get from a lower stack that's as good as a 40, just from a pure physics and loading and energy storage and return point of view. So right now, that obviously wouldn't be the case if we looked and tested apple to apple, purely because the cushioning and, and these higher stacks is having such a big performance impact on being able to run faster for longer, you know? So what you're talking about right now, for, in my opinion, it's kind of like right now, it's not really even that feasible until there's some bigger steps being made um, yeah. that would require most likely... It's super tricky because if you're thinking about marathon running, it's it's a different conversation than if you're talking about half 10K, 5K. You know, it's really going to be distance specific. But I'm saying a while back, we didn't know about PBAX foams and yeah. nobody was using PBAX foams. And all of a sudden those hit the market and we have a, a, a very high stack shoe that feels light, which you, did, you just couldn't have before. And I think when we talked earlier about people mimicking uh, what was out there, you had all these flops because they didn't have the foam. So you just had a high stack shoe yeah. with maybe an EVA foam that weighs a lot that doesn't have the softness that you can feel the plate actually interact with the foam. So that's, I'm thinking this is probably something that hasn't been invented at, at this point, but I got it. But to switch shift to a shoe that you guys do have right now, the pro three, I understand that we won't be getting a huge update for the pro four, um, but it's now sort of in its, uh, I mean, we're, we've been using it. Like I still like the original pro, even though it didn't have the cutouts and the stuff like that. I thought that was a, a, a good, good shoe. Now it's, it's kind of stylized a little differently, but pretty similar to the original. And we're, we're getting on to now the fourth version, which will be similar to the third version Are, is the fifth version going to be something radically different or are we just going to keep making incremental changes to a shoe that seems to work? Yeah, it's a great question and I would love to talk to it without giving away too many insights. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard one to be, to be totally honest with to, to tell you because it's, yeah, I'd probably get in trouble for it, right? <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> so there's yeah. something good. We are a very, we're a very, we're a very passionate team who is who is really great at what they do and in our perspective things are moving in a, a strong a strong way without now can i ask so, you um concrete <laughs> gotcha yeah, yeah can totally. i ask you about you, you mentioned the you know strong upper that we've seen on the prime x2 are we going to see the strung upper on other models throughout the line? I feel like I've seen somewhere that the Takumi Sen was going to have it, but I, I can't be sure of that. Is that something we'll see in the future? Because like Thomas said, I feel like... Personally, I love this upper. Yeah, the, the strung upper is amazing. And I feel yeah. like that is one of those things that can contribute to better performance is a great fitting lightweight upper. Yeah, I think right now we're obviously placing it on specifically the Prime X and we're learning a lot. 
and we see an incredible benefit and potential in Strum. And the team are currently looking at where else we can use this adaptive technology in the range. And I wouldn't give away too many um, insights there. Again, just in case I'm probably not meant to be saying anything. So I would just say that's, um, it's an epic technology and we're excited about it and we see the benefits and yeah. There's some interesting It looks like a product. I was going to say the strung looks like something that you could scan someone's foot and it looks like something that you would be able to computer generate almost a custom fit for say your elite athletes. It seems like that type of technology is, am I just intuitively going to the, the right place there or is it going to be a standard fit for everybody? No, I mean, I think if you look at the first Futurecraft Strung that we brought out as a brand to demonstrate this technology, I'm pretty sure if you go and read the copy there, the, the idea of Strung is that it's very, um, you can engineer and place yarns where you want to and, and what's the purpose behind that setup of the yarns. So that's one of the advantages of this manufacturing technology, right? It's not just like a standard engineered mesh or another running material, you really have a lot of opportunities to play with support, to play with stretch, breathability, and customize customizability as well. So just like you said, in theory, it would be very much possible to engineer a strong upper specifically to someone's foot, yes. I think we've covered most of it, Robbie. Uh, we really appreciate your time. We are loving the Adi Zero line. And uh, just, I think the Lightstrike Pro has come a long way as far as the cushioning technology for the shoes. I feel like Robbie and I both really enjoyed running in, in the Pro 3 this past year. And I, like I said, I really love the Boston 12. Robbie's always been an advocate for the Takumi Sen uh, 8, 9, all of them. I mean, what, mm -hmm. yeah, it just keeps going. Yeah. So, and we are excited to get more miles on the Prime X2. Thank you for breaking it down for us and kind of showing us and giving us a behind the curtain look at what Adidas is doing. It's been a real pleasure for us. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. And just shout out to the incredible Adi Zero team, all of the amazing people behind the work that's going on, to the athletes, to everyone involved. It's, it's super special. And yeah, I appreciate having us on today. It was super fun to connect and uh, hopefully meet you guys in person at some point as well. Yeah, it'd be right. great. Just uh, send us an invite to the Adidas headquarters in Germany. We'll come and check out all the uh, all the equipment. Boom. Alessandro, <laughs> let's, let's get that organized. Right, <laughs> let's do it. Thanks so much for your time. All right. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> all right. Yeah, tschüss.